இந்த எஃப் ஒன் ஜென்ரேஷன் மெண்டல் ஒப்டைன் ரவுண்ட் எல்லோ பிளான்ட்ஸ் ஆல் தி பிளான்ட்ஸ் ஃபார் ரவுண்ட் எல்லோ விச் மீன்ஸ் ரவுண்ட் சீட் கோட் அண்ட் எல்லோ கலர்ட் காட்டிலீடன் திஸ் வாஸ் தி ஃபீனோடைப் அண்ட் தி ஜீனோடைப் வாஸ் கேபிட்டல் ஆர் ஸ்மால் ஆர் கேபிட்டல் வை ஸ்மால் வை ஹி அலோட் தீஸ் பிளான்ட்ஸ் டு அண்டர் கோ செல்ஃப் பாலினேஷன் ஸோ கேபிட்டல் ஆர் ஸ்மால் ஆர் கேபிட்டல் வை ஸ்மால் வை இன்டு கேபிட்டல் ஆர் ஸ்மால் ஆர் capital y small y as we have seen earlier four types of gametes are possible capital r capital y capital r small y small r capital y small r small y so four types of gametes in each case capital r capital y capital r small y small r capital y small r small y similarly here so 4 into 4 16 combinations are possible to show these 16 possible combinations let us put a punnett square checkerboard so that punnett square will have 16 boxes ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಎರಡು ಮೂರು ನಾಲ್ಕು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೊ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಪುಟ್ ಎ ಚಕ್ಕರ್ ಬೋರ್ಡ್ containing 16 boxes 16 boxes write the gametes of one parental combination here capital r capital y capital r small y small r capital y small r small y write the gametes of another parental combination here capital r capital y capital r small y small r capital y small r small y now you can work out the possible combinations this into this capital r capital r capital y capital y this into this capital r capital r capital y small y this into this capital r small r capital y capital y this into this capital r small r capital y small y this into this capital r capital r capital y small y this into this see carefully this into this capital r capital r small y small y this into this capital r small r capital y small y this into this capital r small r small y small y this into this capital r small r capital y capital y this into this capital r small r capital y small y this into this 
again watch this carefully this into this small r small r capital y capital y this into this small r small r capital y small y this into this capital r small r capital y small y this into this capital r small r small y small y this into this small r small r capital y small y and this into this small r small r capital y capital y this into this small r small r small y small y these are the 16 possible combinations let us now symbolically represent their phenotype we are taking only the external appearance now only phenotype this plant is round yellow round yellow so i will symbolically represent it like this it is round yellow this is again round yellow round yellow this is again round yellow this is again round yellow at least one capital r one capital y round yellow this will be again round yellow look at this capital r capital r small y small y so this is round this is round this is green so round green this is again round yellow this is again round green this one round yellow round yellow what is the phenotype of this plant small r small r capital y capital y so it is wrinkled yellow wrinkled yellow this is again wrinkled yellow this one round yellow this one round green this one wrinkled yellow and this one wrinkled green symbolically now we have represented only the phenotype only the external appearance see how many of them are round yellow 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so these nine plants these nine plants 
they are round and loop lines. This is round green, this is round green, this is round green. So, these three, these three are round green plants. These three are wrinkled yellow plants. wrinkled yellow plants and this remaining one is wrinkled green plant. The ratio nine is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 1 2 3 3 1 2 3 3 and 1 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 so this is the phenotypic ratio this is the phenotypic ratio. After representing the results like this, Mendel was able to come to another important conclusion and after representing the results like this, Mendel was able to come to another very important conclusion and that conclusion came to be known as the law of independent law of independent assortment. So, when he started analyzing the reason why two new combinations why and how these two new combinations appeared then he was able to come to a significant conclusion which is known as the law of independent assortment or Mendel's third law of inheritance. Let us first see what the law states, then we will try to analyze the law using this example. The law states like this. In a dihybrid cross. So, instead of saying in a plant involving two pairs of contrasting characters, I will simply say in a dihybrid cross. The factors or genes responsible for the two pairs of contrasting characters two pairs of contrasting characters stay together stay together in the F1 generation, but assort 
independently assault independently during the formation of gametes this is the statement of law of independent assortment in a dihybrid cross a cross involving two pairs of contrasting characters the factors responsible for the two pairs of contrasting characters that means there are four factors these four factors are staying together look at the genotype of this f1 plant what is the genotype of the f1 plant suggesting all the four factors are staying together there is a dominant gene for round seed coat recessive gene for wrinkled seed coat dominant gene for yellow cotyledon recessive gene for green cotyledon they are staying together but but these factors assort independently during the formation of gametes in the previous case monohybrid cross we have said the factors separate segregate during the formation of gametes therefore that law is called law of segregation here instead we are saying assort independently what does it mean look at the gametes there are factors responsible for two pairs of opposite characters therefore each of the four types of gametes that is formed here should contain one factor responsible for seed coat one factor responsible for color of the cotyledon so here capital r capital y both the factors are dominant here capital r small y factor responsible for seed coat is dominant cotyledon recessive here seed coat recessive cotyledon dominant here both of them are recessive that means instead of separating into dominant and recessive factors the factors or you can call them genes are assorting into factors responsible for seed coat factors responsible for cotyledon therefore this is known as independent assortment independent assortment assortment irrespective of the dominant or recessive condition assortment is taking place into seed coat and cotyledon genes so this law came to be known as the law of independent assortment when you look at the gametes itself you will realize why and how two new combinations have occurred here what is this gamete suggesting capital r capital y round yellow what is this gamete suggesting capital r small y round green what is this gamete suggesting wrinkled yellow what is this gamete suggesting wrinkled green so assortment has already taken place during the formation of gametes so these are the parental combination gametes responsible for parental combinations gametes responsible for new combinations this is the law of independent assortment now look at this situation here we have written only the phenotypic ratio is it possible to write a genotypic ratio for this it is possible it will be very long because take for example the round yellow plants there are nine round yellow plants here this is homozygous for round homozygous for yellow homozygous for round heterozygous for yellow heterozygous for round homozygous for yellow heterozygous for round 
heterozygous for yellow. So, in the round yellow plants only, there are four genotypes. Four genotypes. In the round green plant, there are two genotypes. This is one, this is one. Homozygous for both round and green, heterozygous for round, homozygous for green. Again, in wrinkled yellow, in wrinkled yellow, out of the three combinations, one is homozygous for both wrinkled and yellow. This is homozygous for wrinkled, heterozygous for yellow. This is homozygous for both wrinkled and green. So, the genotypic ratio will be very long. It will be if you write the genotypic ratio, it comes like this 1 is to 2 is to 2 is to 4 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1. This will be the genotypic ratio 1 is to 2 is to 2 is to 4 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1. This is for homozygous round and yellow. This is for homozygous round heterozygous yellow heterozygous round homozygous yellow like this you will get a long genotypic ratio. This is one important point to be noted. Another important point to be noted here is, is there any relationship between the phenotypic ratio of a dihybrid cross 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 and the phenotypic ratio of the monohybrid cross 3 is to 1. Look at the phenotype of the plants here, round yellow plants 9 round green plants 3, wrinkled yellow plants 3, wrinkled green plants 3. What is the total number of plants here out of 16? What is the total number of plants having round seed coat 9 and 3, 12, wrinkled 3 and 1, 4. So, 12 is to 4 is 3 is to 1. Similarly, yellow colored cotyledon 9 plus 3 12, green colored cotyledon 3 plus 1 4, 12 is to 1, 12 is to 4 is again 3 is to 1. Therefore, a dihybrid cross is a combination of two monohybrid crosses. If you take only the dominant and recessive genes, segregation has taken place, but, but if you take them together, it is independent assortment. So, this ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1, this ratio is 3 is to 1 into 3 is to 1 multiply 3 is to 1 by 3 is to 1, you will get 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. 